Week number seven. Almost halfway through. We'll be halfway done by the end of this week. And we're just getting to our first quantum algorithm. That means you have a lot of skills built up and we should be able to quickly understand how some of these algorithms work. The first algorithm is the traditional first one you would be introduced to in a quantum computing course, and that's the deutsch joza algorithm. And this is the first one that actually demonstrated some sort of computational speed up that a quantum computer would enjoy over a classical computer. The problem that the deutsch joza algorithm solves is a bit esoteric, so it doesn't solve a useful problem, it doesn't solve a problem that arises naturally, but the point of the algorithm is to demonstrate that there is a difference between quantum and classical computation, and you can get, in fact, quite drastic speed ups. So we first need to talk about what this problem is, and then talk about how you would solve it classically, what the best classical algorithm uh, would achieve, and then finally, what a quantum algorithm would achieve, including what the quantum algorithm is and how to analyze it. So the first thing we need to do is ask, what is a balanced function? Okay, so the functions that we're going to be talking about are Boolean functions. And Boolean functions are ones that map to bits. Uh, in fact, a single bit. So a function that takes as input something and produces one bit is a Boolean function. And what can go in here uh, can uh, typically uh, be anything, but we'll consider other sequences of, of bits. So this would be, in general, uh, n bits go into here. You could have one bit, or two bits, or any number of bits. So as an example, let's look at a one bit function. So a one bit function might be the function that takes 0 and produces 0 and takes 1 and produces 1. So this is the do nothing function. But it's a valid boolean function because it takes as input a bit and produces a bit. How many such functions are there? Well, we can just count all of the possibilities. Since the output is only two possibilities, uh, for every possible input, there's two possible outputs. So we can just list them all. So let's start with one bit Boolean functions. Let's say the input bit is x. And then let's start coming up with functions. So let's say the first one is f0. So the input can be 0 or it can be one, there's only two possibilities. Um, let's start simple and say, call f sub zero the one that produces zero for both of those possible inputs. And we can just enumerate all the possibilities. So we see that for each option there's two possibilities, so we'll just go through and it'll be like counting in binary. So the first one could stay one, and then the second one could be zero. And then the first one could be one, and the second one could be zero. And the only possibility that's left is that they're both one. So for a one-bit function, there are, in fact, only four possibilities. Now, a balanced function was the where we started, and that's what these two functions are. And it's called balance because there's the equal number of zeros and ones in the output of the function. These two here are called constant 
because the output stays constant no matter what the input is. So f0 and f3 are constant functions, f1 and f2 are balanced functions. Now there are many more functions we can consider if we change the input space. And we can start to categorize these functions by identifying the structures such as balance versus constant. And there are many ways we can do that. But we'll notice that for two bit functions, there are many more possibilities. And you'll see that things start to explode exponentially quite quickly. So for two bits, there are now four possibilities. Okay, so that's not too many. And let's start to enumerate the possible outputs of a two-bit function. So again, we could have the one that just produces all zeros. Now there's four inputs and there's two possibilities for each input. That means there's two to the power of four, so 16 possible functions. So we can start to go through. Let's just count in binary. So we have one, and then two will be two in binary as we kind of look at this binary, uh, four bit binary number going from top to bottom. And maybe you'll notice as we go along that there are some functions that are neither constant nor balanced. One, one, zero, seven, one, one, one. Okay, well, there we go. That's only half of them. All right, we got to do the rest. And maybe I should have drawn uh, some nice straight lines here so that we can continue. Well, not straight line. I think we can. Uh, We can manage one zero zero one and F ten one zero one zero almost there F eleven one zero one one F twelve one one zero zero F thirteen one one zero one Fourteen one 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 zero finally F fifteen one 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 Q. Okay. Here they all are. All sixteen possible two bit functions. And let's have a look here. Let's look for the the constant functions are easy. So we can identify those constant constant. You can imagine as we increase the number of input bits, the constant functions are the ones that have all zero or all one. So there's always two constant functions. So these are the constant functions. And let's try to identify the balance functions. So these are the ones that have the same number of zeros and ones. This one. Let's do it this way. There's this one. And this one. And this one. And I think that's all of them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six balanced functions. Okay, so there, there's functions that don't have the same number of zeros and ones and are also not constant. And you can imagine as we increase the number of input bits that these will be the ones that dominate. Having that same number of zeros and ones, there's, there'll be plenty of functions that uh, have that property. However, 
the number of functions grows exponentially, the number of possible functions grows exponentially, and this is a very special structure within that set of possible functions. So the the problem that the Deutsch Jose algorithm solves concerns obviously these types of functions and the idea of asking for the output of a function on a given input and trying to identify the structure of that function. So we imagine that we have this black box, okay, and the black box is implementing some function, we don't know what it is, we can input uh, a bit and find out the output or multiple bits and find out the output of that and the question becomes how many queries do I need? Okay, and in the next video we're going to look at classically how many queries we need for these black boxes in order to determine whether the function implemented by the box is balanced or constant.